Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Wednesday, January 13th, and let us begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Today we are celebrating the feast day of St. Hilary, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may rightly understand and truthfully profess the divinity of your Son, which the Bishop St. Hilary taught with, which, with such constancy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share the blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who, through fear of death, had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely, <coughs> excuse me, surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let me read that again. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Just a reminder. Our responsorial psalm, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he the Lord in our God, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Upon leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited upon them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons not permitting them to speak, because they knew who he was. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and upon finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. 
He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. For he went into their, so he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we hear this great story today, but first let's talk quickly about St. Hilary. St. Hilary was a bishop and doctor, one of our early saints. He was born in Portiers at the beginning of the 4th century, around 350. He was chosen a bishop of his native city. He worked energetically against the Arian sacrileges, um, the Arian heresies, and was exiled by Emperor Constantius. His wisdom and sound doctrine mark his books in defense of the Catholic faith and in the interpretation of Scripture. He had died in 367. Um, interesting man, interesting man. So one of the early writers of Scripture. But let's go back to this reading that we have in the Gospel today from Mark. And again, as I mentioned the other day, Mark is, Mark is that newspaper reporter kind of writing. You know, um, In fact, we don't have enough of writings of Mark to get all the way through a year in terms of readings, so we sometimes supplement with other readings uh, in the canon of the Scripture. Um, Matthew and Luke are pretty good-sized books. Mark's short. You can actually read Mark in one sitting if you really put your mind to it. But great reading today, the story of the synagogue. And this is the, the his leaving the synagogue. It's tails on right to the reading we had yesterday, and he goes to Peter's house. And probably many of you have heard this story. You know, he cures Peter's mother-in-law. She gets up and waits on them. Then other people start bringing more people. He cures them. And, of course, this is important because, you know, he's, he's curing people's ills, and, of course, that's making him popular. Um, we also should remember, though, in our day and age, it's not just about the physical maladies. It's about these up here as well, because Christ is to heal us spiritually as well. And being healed spiritually has a great deal to do with being healed physically. The other piece that I think everybody needs to call out, and it's important that we call out, and we hear Jesus doing this over and over again. And I'm going to call to mind a reading that we had um, recently, and those, of course, the loaves and fishes. It's in all four Gospels and so on. And what do we see in that particular reading is, yet Jesus performs a miracle, right? You know, he, the, the loaves and fishes, everybody eats. You know, he preaches all day, and then he tells his men, you know, go ahead of me, I'll, I'll catch up to you. And he goes to the top of the mountain and prays. And we hear this constantly. He goes to the top of the mountain and prays. We hear him at the beginning of readings, the end of readings. Jesus goes to the top of the mountain and prays. And in this case, I think it does say, it says he went off to a deserted place. Again, top of the mountain or wherever he went, out into the wilderness. But he goes to some place off by himself to pray. And that's probably the single most important thing that we all forget to do when it comes to practicing our faith. We all get wound up about, you know, there's all of the jokes about when can I, when can I miss Mass? You know, when is it not a sin to miss Mass? When, you know, well, this happened or that happened. Does that make it a sin to miss Mass? We, and we hear this all the time about, you know, right now during COVID, of course, the Archbishop, God bless the man, has um, dispensed with the Mass requirement for everybody because of the COVID, you know, pandemic. So people don't feel like it's mandated that they have to come to Mass and be with other people where they might get infected. God bless him for that. You know, he's, he's taken that mandate away. Why is it, and I've often wondered this, why didn't Jesus give us a mandate to pray? You know, why wasn't that an obligation? Why wasn't that some kind of, you know, requirement? Because we see that constantly in the books of Jesus where he goes off to the desert and prays. He goes somewhere alone. He takes himself away from people. And don't, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I love to be able, like if I'm traveling or on an airplane or something, is to pray a rosary or to be someplace where I'm not driving, you know, or not, you know, that I can sit and, and say a rosary. Those kinds are great. But when do we go off into a place and really sit down and spend time with God? Probably many of us don't. And, and right now, during this pandemic, that would be a great thing to be doing because we're all sitting at home going, what am I going to do? Why don't we go into our room, close the door, you know, away from family, kids, whatever, whoever's there, 
and spend some quiet time with God. Because Jesus does this to recharge himself. And there's this distinctive message that so many of us miss, me included, that we need to constantly lead off everything, launch everything out of a ministry of prayer, out of a habitual prayer life. Our lives as Christians have to be founded in prayer. So many of us found them in worship, which is important. The mass requirement's important. Going to mass is important. But we seem to take that because there's this obligation around it. But we don't think of the fact that we need to ground ourselves in prayer first. Why is it that we always start our meetings with prayers? Our, you know, our grace, you know, say grace at the table. And if you're not doing that, you should. Even if you're sitting there having lunch by yourself, you should say grace before you. You know, you should start everything with prayer. You should end everything with prayer. So we hear this in today's story. Here's Jesus doing all these miraculous things. And it's easy to get all tied up. Oh, he's curing these people. And he, you know, he cures Peter's mother. And all these, they're bringing all these people and so on and so forth. And what does he do? He's done. He goes off by himself and prays. And what happens? I mean, the disciples come and say, you left the party. You know, everybody's, everybody's looking for you. And he's prayed himself up. You know, we hear the expression prayed up. He's all prayed up and said, we need to go on to the other village. I'm ready to go off to that other village. So my brothers and sisters, ground everything in prayer. Jesus did. Worked for him. It'll work for us as well. God bless. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God in the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord give us grace to live in a full fellowship with our brothers and sisters and of other religions, praying for one another open to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day. It's hump day. We'll see you tomorrow, Thursday. God bless. Have a good one.